Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a Charles Daly Empire Grade 1911 review for you. This 1911 from Charles Daly is made in Italy by Braxia. I think they're called B-R-I-X-I-A. Anyway, the Charles Daly comes very well equipped here in the box that it comes in. You've got your tools right here to uh, work on the 1911 if you need to. You've got your bushing rents right here. You've got uh, a board brush here and uh, different tips for your brush. So you've got brass, yeah, that's brass. And then a cloth one right here. So that's kind of cool that they send you that stuff in the box. The Charles Daly does come with two 1911 magazines right here. They kind of do look like Acmags, but I don't know. But they, uh, they kind of look like Acmags, but they don't say. On them. So anyway, the Charles Daly does ship out with two of them and that's important to know. During the review of this Charles Daly, we did shoot 200 rounds of Sig Sauer Elite Performance Ammunition, 45 ACP. And the pistol did have a couple of malfunctions. We're going to cover that in this review. All right, guys, the Charles Daly Empire Grade 1911. First rounds. Reset is a little bit longer. I almost saw myself flinch right there. It's a good combat trigger, though. If I just let it out fast, that's a pretty good group, man. Nice shooting. Yeah. So, guys, this Charles Daly 1911 is a production 1911. But it ain't no, you know, Rusty Hammer, Dan Wesson, uh, production 1911, if you know what I mean. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> um, considering its price point, this Charles Daly 1911 is pretty well machined overall. Let me show you some of the machining flaws on this particular 1911. I'm not sure if they're all like this as far as these Empire Grey 1911s, but this is our specific gun and its problems, okay? On the front strap checkering, you can see that there's some mess ups in the machine you can see up here this line of checkering right here and in the halfway mark and again toward the bottom do you see like those little highlights in the checkering where it's just not precise and it looks like the machining didn't go over quite so well moving back here let's look at the beaver tail and its uh, fitment this is another miss in my opinion you can literally see daylight through the beaver tail area you can see the red background as far as the towel in the background and then it does have some pretty serious side to side play on top of that now what that leads to is when you're gripping this pistol if you're shooting it all day at the range the beaver tail will irritate the web of your hand pretty bad or at least that happened to me Bredis, do you remember any irritation no i didn't really have any issues like that with okay. it okay so that's the second thing and the third thing that i've noticed so far was the safety on the ambi side you think that you're fully up, right? I just clicked it into place maybe as far as the detent, but I didn't. You can see the gap right there. Now let's press it up a little bit more. Now it's fully clicked into safe, okay? Now beforehand, all I was able to do was click it up to that first, like, clicker detent where it's not in the detent fully. And I literally just had to take, before this video, a nylon hammer to the safety and hit it a couple times from the bottom right here to make it go fully into the safety detent. That's not good, guys. You know, I wish I didn't have to say those three things as far as those misses that I've noticed on this gun, but it is what it is, you know? If you guys want a true, honest review, that's what you're gonna get right here, and these are three misses that I've noticed so far on this gun as far as overall quality. Today's video is sponsored by Core Essentials. Core Essentials makes one of the best gun belts on the market today. I've been using their gun belt products since 2016. I thoroughly believe in their belt products, and that's why we are excited to work with them now. I'm currently using the new Tactical Reinforced Nylon Belt from Core Essentials. The nylon webbing outer layer is rated up to 500 pounds. It is a very strong belt. The reinforced power core center and super fiber inner lining make this unique belt durable and stiff enough to support small to medium to even larger handguns. The belt itself is rated up to 8 pounds maximum. Of course I am exceeding that with my duty belt setup here. 
This is what the belt looks like while wearing my duty belt over top of it. And guys, here's the core belt being used inside of a full duty belt. So it's strong enough to support that. It's definitely strong enough to support your CCW firearm. So now let's cover the belts and go over the system and the buckles themselves. All of Core's belts are 800% more adjustable than your old traditional belts. These track line belts have over 40 sizing positions to choose from. You just pull the extra belt material through the buckle and you get that precise fit. You can press the belt buckles quick release tab to loosen the belt. These features make it very easy to find that perfect fit no matter what your size. The adjustments in the belt's track is made every quarter of an inch making it very versatile indeed. The track is hidden when you wear the belt and the track is nearly indestructible. We do not see any wear on the track belts that we have been using for over a year. The belt secured the buckle using the teeth clamps and two set screws. You've got classic style buckle designs here that do not scream tactical belt because no one needs to know you're carrying a concealed weapon. Core Essentials offers a 30 day money back guarantee and a one year warranty on their products. My current setup is running the X4 stainless steel buckle and a tactical reinforced gun belt. The whole package goes for a little bit less than $63 after you use the discount code B9USA. That's a real value and a good product that I have tested over time and I highly recommend it to you guys. I will be buying several more belts coming up and giving them away as gifts, be it for a birthday or for Christmas season. So here's the two different color belts that are available from Core Essentials. As far as taking your gun on or off as a concealed carry person, right underneath here is the release. And it's that easy. Very strong belt. Putting it back on. And this excellent leather holster right here. And that's right guys, I've switched over to the Dan Wesson for a concealed carry handgun. Feed it through the belt buckle, and then just grab it from this end here, and pull. And you're good to go. There is no slag in this belt, it holds it really tight to your hip right here. As you can see it sucks this 1911 up right up against my hip. This is not a light overall package right here, and the belt does an excellent job. If you do place your order, guys, make sure you use the B9USA discount code and save 10% off your entire order. All right, this is the Wilson Combat Mag. Uh, the Neo Mag. Failure. Didn't feed all the way. And that was the last round. This thing is accurate. Look at that group. Yeah. That's two mags right there. Yeah, this thing's very accurate, man. It's getting smooth, too. The grips are good. All right, with all that said, Young Beretta just went over a bunch of the problems with the 1911 itself. I did want to cover a few other things on the pistol. The slide and frame themselves are made of steel. So this is a long-term type 1911 that can stand up to thousands and thousands of rounds, no problem at all. It does come in at 38.8 ounces. So again, more typical of your full-size 1911. It doesn't have the rail, and so that's what's keeping the weight down from the 42 ounce area down to the 38.8. Most 1911s in this price range do have a cast frame. So again, as Brett Singer said, having a steel frame is a bonus in this 1911. And it looks fantastic. I mean, the coating that they're using on it, the finishing that they're using on it is very nice. The trigger itself is pretty well placed into the gun. I mean, it's really well fit there. The hammer looks good. It does have a dual safety here, an ambi safety. The paddles are nice and large. You've got a little bit of serrations up at the top to cut down on. 
on glare as you're looking over the pistol. The barrel is, yeah, it's pretty well fit right there. No movement in the barrel at all. So there are a lot of the good things to be said about this 1911 too. I did want to cover all that. There's your fitment in the back. So there's your fitment in the back as far as slide to frame. There's really no movement at all. Just a tiny bit here in the back and you can kind of see that movement right there. So that's that's about all you got. It is, a, is it a Series 70 or a Series 80 pistol? As you can see right here, it is a Series 70. It's another positive for sure. Yeah, that's another positive for sure. I, I like the coating, whatever finish they're using on this. Um, it reminds me of the duty coat from Dan Wesson. So not quite as dark, but pretty close. I think it's attractive. And it looks like it's going to do its job very well as far as uh, fighting the elements and fighting corrosion and stuff like that. The cocking serrations in the front and the rear are decent. Pretty easy to get a hold of there and from the front. Again, not too bad at all. So they both work nicely. The ammo is supplied by Elite Performance Ammunition from Sig Sauer. This is their 45 ACP ammo, 230 grain, traveling at 850 feet per second and 369 foot pounds. All right, Wilson Combat Mag here in the Charles Daly 1911. Extended Metgar Mag. Clear to feed. I think this is one of those 1911s that you may have to do what they call the 1911 dance and find what magazine works best for it. I think the Wilson Combat mags seem to work the best in this 1911 of the magazines that we had on hand during the testing. So other things you get on this particular 1911 is like a spec op texture type grip. These are pretty aggressive up here, just so you know. Not so much on this side over here. So the grips themselves right here, you can get a closer look they're kind of divided right down the middle here together they're very aggressive um i would say in the upper end of aggression as far as the grip texturing is concerned and it does help you you know get a great grip on the pistol as far as controlling it when you're at the range and shooting the pistol the grips were really good i thought they come stock on the pistol so basically the pistol does come with a lot of great little features already on it that you're paying a great price for. This is an example of one. So everything we talk about, the issues that we've had with this one too, again, is an example of one pistol. So what I'm experiencing on this one may not be the same if you own one and what your experience with this 1911 is. Now the Neomag. <sighs> this is an extended magazine. Get it again. I'm going to try it with one less round in it. Front strap checkering on the pistol is quite good. 25 lines per inch is what we think here. And 20 lines per inch on the mainspring housing back here, which is metal. I like how the beaver tail rides up nice and high to prevent you from getting kind of slide bite or anything like that. I wish it was fit much better in the back. So that's 
a very accurate complaint, I think. They could do a much better job there. There's no reason why it should look like that. Yeah. So that's good to cover these things. We want to be completely honest with our subscribers and our viewers when we're testing and reviewing pistols on what we see that's in front of us to make sure that you know you know what to be aware of and what to be looking at when you're making that buying decision. It's nice to have an adjustable rear sight back here which is adjustable both for windage and elevation. That's always a nice feature and I do like it when I've got an ambi safety with nice paddles on both sides. I just wish it sounded a little bit, I wish it sounded as good going on as it does when you sweep it off. And we did have to wrap it a few times with a hammer to be able to get it to go to the total up position. From the opposite side, yeah. For your safety to be on. And now it seems to be doing okay. Doing a little scratching right here with the fitment of the safety. Overall, I thought the trigger is getting better. Um, not a whole lot of ways it needs to push out to hit that reset. It's right there almost as soon as you start letting up on it. And there's not a lot of strength to the spring, but it doesn't have to go very far. Now let me say this, out of box, I did actually adjust the trigger on this as far as the uh, over travel screw. Well, that's nice. Yeah. It's nice that you have that option right down there. So that's why it kind of does look a little bit shorter than a traditional skeletonized trigger does look, is mm. because I did adjust it. Nice. And it's because of the, uh, again, as you said, the trigger return spring isn't as strong as it should be. And that's the reason why I actually did adjust it, was because beforehand when the trigger was further out, it wasn't resetting to how I would personally like it. It didn't seem like as nice of a trigger as like on the Magnum Research 1911 or like a Dan Watson or name your, you know, brand 6-hour 1911 and stuff like that. But after adjusting it, it's not bad. It's a combat trigger. And as you saw, as you're seeing this uh, review, you guys, this gun was extremely accurate at the range. Yeah. I mean, it shot really, really well. Yeah. And But again, like I was talking about with the trigger, there was a couple times where I thought it was reset and I wasn't fully out yet because I, I wanted a more positive uh, reset as far as the spring and it just didn't seem like it was as good. And as we talked about before, guys, this does have a 5-inch barrel in it and there is no movement in the barrel. I mean, that's why it's so friggin' accurate. I mean, we could tell right off the bat this thing would shoot probably, if you really concentrated from uh, 10 yards away, you'd probably be putting round almost on top of round from 10 yards. So it's very accurate, very capable of taking headshots from 12, 15 yards away. And the Charles Daly 1911 does come with a full length guide rod on it. So that makes a difference to some people. So just so you know, it does have a full length guide rod and that is the look of the pistol when you'd be done shooting it and it's locked back. It's funny what some people are very picky on, and I myself, I'm, I find myself that way too. So, I like one style over a different style. Out of the Neo Mag. Failure. All right, let's cover this right now. It is not the magazine's fault. This gun has had some problems today. Several failure to feeds, guys. Um, it tends to like Mechar mags. It doesn't seem to like the uh, E-Landers e -landers or the stock mags even. Yep. It did well with the Wilson mag. So this is one of those 1911s that may have a, a few issues with different sorts of magazines, at least at this point. Could it be a break-in period? Yes, it could be. But we've shot a lot of 1911s that are pretty much perfect from the get, so. And we shot another one today that ran 100% on SIG. everything, the SIG. The, the SIG 1911, yeah. So, possible break-in period here on the Charles Daly. It is very accurate. Yeah. Very accurate 1911. So that's good. And then we'll cover some other things on the tabletop. Let's go back to the tabletop right now. 
All right, in closing, guys, I think the Charles Daly 1911 is something to consider if you want an all-steel 1911 in a good price point. The MSRP on this is $1,099, and we are finding them selling for in the $750 to $850 range. So I could see where you could pick this up and be completely happy with the features and benefits on this 1911. If the safety is good on yours, then that's something to kind of watch out for if you get a chance to look at it, uh, you know, sightseeing instead of ordering it online, then uh, you'll be able to check out some of these things before you actually make the purchase. Might want to look at the fitment, if this matters to you, of the grip safety in the back. The accuracy of this 1911 was just top notch. So I did like that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in this Charles Daly 1911 or anything else available from Charles Daly, go ahead and check out their products on their website. As always, everyone, thanks for watching the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Brett and I, Millimeter USA, for more guns and gear videos coming up in the future.